Hi, Steve Von Brandt here for the Bass College. I'm down here in Lower Delaware with Skip. We're going out today again at Hog Heaven. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. Front's still here. It's got some mist. It's only 40 degrees. It's going to go up to about 50 today. Water temperatures dropped tremendously, but the bass seem to be active, especially the largest ones. And what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of try to mimic what happened yesterday. We're going to hit the sand points in the first part of the coves. The bass don't seem to be all the way in the backs of the creeks yet. They're just about the first quarter of the way in, in water that's one to three feet deep. They're not heavy in the pads. What they are is they're looking the stage. They're, they're looking for hard sand bottoms, which is where we found most of them. They may be in wood or some grass that's very close by or mixed in with a bottom that's sand with little rocks or chunk rock, but they're in that type of a bottom. Uh, they're not even necessarily all on the north shore. They're just in that type of a bottom in about one to three feet of water. Uh, it seemed to be real specific. We're going to throw the uh, dirty jigs again, make multiple casts to the, to the different locations where the bass are. Uh, we are going to mix it up today a little bit. We're going to throw some different baits to see if we can find them in different locations. We're going to we're going to cruise across some of the flats a little further back into the creeks, throw different rattle traps and chatter baits and things like that to see if there are any schooling bass. There aren't as many shad in this lake, so you don't get as much schooling activity like you do in Knoxentown. The water is stained to muddy in most spots. It's not it's eutrophic lake, but it's not. Uh, filled with photoplankton. It's not that green or Turkish uh, turquoise color type of a lake like some of them are that are real eutrophic. It is stained and muddy. Um, got a lot of grass and pads, but like I say they're on a hard bottom. So we're going to throw the dirty jigs uh, in three eighths and half ounce, black and blue. I've got a zoom chunk on like you saw yesterday. I have several other ones rigged um, with uh, Grandy Bass uh, Mega Claws trailers and uh, some sweet beavers. Some with a little bit of red in it, uh, some mixed in with the brown and greens and uh, multiple colored strands. I think that's real important for the contrast. Uh, everything that's been being thrown in wood is being thrown on 17 pound Berkeley Trans Optic line. The mono keeps your uh, baits, like the dirty jigs here, from getting hung up in the wood and the heavy cover. So we do that with the heavy cover, the lay downs, things like that. When I'm at the docks, I'm going to be throwing either the Suffolk's 832 braid in 50 or 65 pound test or I'm going to be throwing the spider wire flora braid which sinks uh, real quickly and has direct contact with your bait so that's real important they're very light hitters you got to be a line watcher you're going to miss some of these big fish so we're going to get out here now we're going to see what happens and hopefully we'll see you guys in a minute with a big bait Okay, here we are now at the first uh, mouth of the cove. This is where we're going to start today, not with the jigs, but with the rattle traps, different ones, cotton cordell super spots and uh, shad color and a red one. But um, you can see how the land comes out here. Now these are flats, the water's about one to three feet deep, and then that goes up into the shallow pads later on, up in the very end, the lake ends up there at the back of this creek. But the bass were hitting yesterday, uh, caught the one that got off that you never saw on film on the rattle trap right out here in the center where this point comes out. Now what I think is there's a point there and of course a point there and this is a creek channel coming back in here from the main lake and they were hitting in the direct center and there will be pads and there's some different types of uh, vegetation and grass out there and I think they're holding right off the main creek channel there. Uh, this is what you would call a secondary point. See that's a main lake point there, a main point, not a main lake point, but a main point. And then that's just a smaller point there to the left. And this land apparently goes out into the water and then drops off where there's just a small channel in the center winding through it. And I think they're holding right there on what you would call a secondary point. And that's the ones that we're hitting on the rattle trap. So that's what we're going to try right now and we'll see you guys in a minute. There we go. In the same place I got the 611. This is a nice, looks like five. I'd say it's five. Oh yeah, look at that. Look how nice that is. Oh yes. Got him on Cotton Cordell Super Spot. Look at the belly on him, Steve. Oh yes, Skip. Yeah, man. Steve, he followed me all the way to the boat and hit me right at my feet. I saw him in the water come and hit it. Look at that thing. All right, now let's tell him a little bit about where we are and what we did. Here we are in the first cove here where I caught the 611 yesterday, right off the main lake point. 
And we're throwing the cotton cordell super spot. Right. Crown collar. Right. Well, let's see this bait uh, right here. That's the same same one I call it the me and Jay call it the 40 bass and diamond on No, it. that's a what a half ounce bait, right? Yeah, half ounce. And how were you working that bait? Uh, I was just fishing it real slow, letting it sink and jigging it every once in a while, you know, letting right. it drop. Same way we were talking about. Yep, yep. Feeling the vibration, let it yep. flutter back down. And Steve, I threw this cast over there to that wall, brought it back over, and he hit me like three feet from the boat. I saw him come up and hit it. Saw him hit it. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, nice belly on him. I'd say he's a good five, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Right at five. It wouldn't be five. It would only be four pounds if it was later in the, earlier in the year or later in the year. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, with that belly on it, it weighs five pounds. Yeah. yeah. That is a big belly. Okay. I'm going to let this fish go, Steve. Look at that belly on him. Oh, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, yes. Okay, let's get some more. Rattle trap is going away. Oh yeah, there we go. On the ledge like we talked about. We're right off here, 20 feet off of where I caught some of the bigger fish and I said, this is a serious ledge. It goes from one to six feet in just a matter of 20 feet. And I said, Skip, you ought to be able to work the crankbaits down on the ledge. And oh, look how he swallowed the rattle trap. Right, right across his mouth. And Skip kept working the ledge. And there you go. Steve. All right. Stevie's another one that followed me to the boat. Look at that. Here we go. 40 degrees. Wind's going. Got a light rain. I think it's another five pounder. Steve. Yeah, that's uh, only because of the stomach. Yeah. It's a four pound bass. Right. But um, look at his mouth. Uh, lesion on the bottom or something. Yeah, yeah. He's like he was got a, some kind of a wound there. But that's, look how fat they are. It, I don't know what kind of fish that is in there. There's roe in there, of course, but yeah. there's bait fish or something in there, too. Yeah, this is a nice bass. That's, that's 10 nice. pounds. That's, that's two, two, two fish. Two fish, 10 pounds. Right. Already being like the top five. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm going in the water with him. Let him go. Sluggish. Yeah, it's cold. Yep. Well, let's uh, tell, tell them like where you caught this. Here we are. Here's where I caught the nine pounder yesterday, eight seven. And then uh, here's right here in front of us is where I caught two seven pounders. And then right there is where I caught a seven, a six, a six and a half. And it just drops off. This is the main lake in here at this in here where I'm at the shore at the docks. That's one foot, and then just 20 feet out, it drops off to where we're standing in the boat, which is six to seven feet deep. Right. And just throwing this rattle trap right out here on the ledge. Right, super spot. Pot and Cordell super spot. And that's been a hot bait. Uh, that's what I caught them on yesterday. When I used the rattle trap, I used a red cotton cordell, which is what I have on there. Right. This and that's one of Tom Wolverton's favorite baits is a cotton cordell. He does okay. real well with that. Yeah. Well, this is handy. It's a nice bait. See. You don't always have to have a $20 bait to catch giant fish. Right, right. That's that's a good point. You know, Steve, that fish hit me just like the other one did. He followed me halfway to the boat and real close, about 10 feet from the boat. This time I didn't see the fish, but I felt that little tick. That's all it was. You know, I was jigging it slowly. Tick. I reared back. Oh, that's decent. Look at that. In here where I told you, I said, well, I haven't fished here yet this year. This will be the first time I told Skip, I said, that I've come in here this year. I said, let's, let's try it before we leave, see what happens. And there you go. Hot core down. Nice three-pounder. Yep, super spot. Right in here. Look at that. Fat yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? Yeah, short and fat. Came into my later in the summer cove. Sometimes I'll catch 30 or 40 bass in here on top water. And I said, this is deep, deep pads. And there you go. Skip, tell them what we were saying a minute ago about Red Mill, about it, how it can be hard, what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. How uh, we make it look easy a lot of times on the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but uh, it's really hard. It's almost impossible to figure out what's going on at any time in this pond. You know, because um, on the videos, all we show are the results. But 
The truth is, um, you know, you can easily come in here and get skunked. Right, Steve? Yeah, now, I mean, we've never actually been skunked, but there's been days where you had to work all day to force out one bass. Right, right, right. And now, of course, I catch some bigger fish, but uh, you don't see how it took me six hours sometimes to really figure it out. It can right. really be tough, yeah. uh, no matter how good you are. I mean, right. you could come in here with the same baits and all that. And, yep, and it's and like today on this, on this uh, super spot, I got four bass. And I probably made what would you say 500 casts? Yeah, that right. So exactly. So it's not like we just caught four bass. I mean, we worked hard all day in the freezing cold. Yeah. So it's great though. It's fun. Yeah. The thing is, it's just that when you do get one. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's worth it. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, um, super spot again. Oh gosh, that's nice, isn't it? Yep. We came right back into the same cove. I said, Skip, we're not going to go yet. I'm freezing cold, but. Come back in this same cove, and uh, we were just at. Throw it again. The red lip on him. And uh, here we go. Back in the same cove again. Bleeding a little bit. Right, that's just a cockroach deputy with that vein in his mouth. He's over five, I think. Yeah, around five. Five, five. He's a nice man. Look at that. There he goes. Cotton Cordell, this is it, man. It's freezing cold. I was getting ready to leave. I said, we shouldn't leave. We gotta throw that one more time in the same area. There's more fish gotta be in there. Just like I said this morning, uh, I ran us up here at the outboard. I said, Skip, put the trolling motor down. You run that for this time. And uh, here we go with another one. So we're gonna get out of here. And um, unless we catch another one, this is Steve Von Brandt. This is Skip. Setting the hook up here in the front, thought he had another one for the Bass College. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time down on the water.